Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing a video that I've been wanting to do for a very, very long time. Today we are talking about some of my favorite Asian beauty sunscreens. Most of them are actually Japanese, so there are one or two Korean ones popped in there as well. As you know, this year I've been doing less and less makeup videos and a lot more focused around like skincare. And for me, the number one skincare product is your sunscreen. On my journey of research, I've come across 10 formulas that I think are really fantastic that work really well for me. I do have two others that I tried that I didn't personally like but one of them I think is good for dry skin type so I will kind of mention that at the end as like a token extra. There were also a couple that I picked up that were just very popular sort of Asian sunscreens that I'd seen advertised a lot on like social media and stuff and I wanted to try them but for reasons I didn't get along with them which I'll talk about at the end as well. So my sort of top 10 that I'm going to talk about are all fragrance free which was a real big criteria for me because even though my skin doesn't react like horrifically to fragrance or anything it can be actually an accumulative irritation that occurs over many years if you're using lots and lots of fragrance products on your skin so I try at least with my skincare to avoid fragrance. Some of my makeup still has fragrance which I'm hoping I can kind of wean myself away from. Yeah but definitely with skincare I just make it kind of a blanket rule that I really want to look for formulations that are fragrance free. I do have a mixture of chemical screens and physical screens as well as some combo screens that I want to talk about and there's quite a big price range as well so there should be something in here for everyone's budget. Now I picked all of these products up from YesStyle. As you know if you've watched my channel for a while, YesStyle kindly send me gift cards every so often so that I can select products from their site to try out and review if I wish to but there's no obligation to. It's just basically like PR that I get to choose which I love that kind of relationship because then I'm only choosing products that I'm actually genuinely interested in trying so it's a lot less wasteful than traditional PR. So I was very very lucky that most of these were covered under those gift cards and I will have links to all the products in the description for you as well. So I'm not going to do these in any particular order because I am kind of still forming I guess an opinion on what I think is my favorite favorites out of the 10 and which ones maybe not so much. I don't know there's different factors that kind of affect it. The one that my heart probably leans to the most uh, is actually one of the most expensive ones so it's kind of of hard to rank them because even though that's probably my favorite formulation when you take sort of price into the equation it can really change your mind as well on whether that has to be whether that should be the top spot so I decided not to like rank them I'm just going to talk about the pros and cons of each one and hopefully that is enough information for you guys to base this on. The first one I'm going to talk about is a Japanese sunscreen. It is by the brand Dr. C. Labo. I believe that's how you pronounce it. And this is the UV and white moisture gel. Now this is a very, very high protection. It's SPF 50 plus. PA++++. Most people understand SPF ratings. SPF 50 offers more protection than an SPF 15, but a lot of people are confused about what the PA stands for and the PA pluses and all that. So a lot of Asian sunscreens have that indication on them and the PA is indicative of its sort of UVA protection. And scale used to be one plus, two plus or three pluses. And now a lot of sunscreens do go up to four. This is basically like the highest kind of protection you can really get in a sunscreen being 50 plus, PA++++, so four pluses, so it's very, very high protection. You do get 60 grams of product, which is quite a lot of product. Most of the sunscreens I have are about 30 grams, so half the size. So while this one does cost $81 on YesStyle, the price per gram is a lot lower than other sunscreens. Um, now I do want to say with the pricing, they're kind of estimates because the YesStyle price can fluctuate slightly depending on the exchange rate. So at the moment in Australia when I'm filming this, this one retails for about $81 on YesStyle style so it's not cheap but as I say you do get 60 grams so you get quite a decent amount of product. What I really liked about this one is it doesn't have any obvious kind of scent to it. A very 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 subtle sort of chemical screen scent but it's very very subtle it's not like that traditional like sunscreeny smell it's quite light. It has no artificial fragrance of course and it's alcohol free as well which is something else I really value in skincare products. It sort of has a nice off-white color the texture of it is quite a sort of thick liquid so it's kind of a runny gel cream. It leaves quite a dewy finish so if you have a little bit more of a drier skin type or you're just like me I have normal to oily skin but I actually like quite a dewy look so I really value the dewy effect that this gives. It's also packed with ceramides and jojoba seed oil so it's got some really nice skin nourishing ingredients in there as well. Again if you have slightly more drier skin I think you would really love this. So I really really enjoyed this one. It sat really beautifully underneath makeup as well which is another big factor with sunscreens they have to be cosmetically beautiful as well as offer good protection. So this one has a full chemical screen 
makeup to it so it has octanoxate which is quite a common screen but then it also has a really wonderful ingredient called Juvenile A plus which is one of the newer kind of more advanced screens that's not available in the US. The main issue I often have with chemical screens and why I tend to always lean into a physical if I can is that chemical screens can sometimes break down in UV exposure so while they can offer a good protection at the beginning they can wear off a lot faster however the new kind of generation you could say of sunscreen ingredients chemical screens they stand up very well to the UV rays so they don't break down in sunlight but it is always recommended to reapply sunscreen because you might sweat it off or rub it off and that is always the tricky thing if you're a makeup wearer like me there are setting sprays available on the market they have sunscreen in it you can also use sunscreen powders this next sunscreen is the one that I said is probably my favorite and you guys would have heard me talk about it before um, I don't know what it is about this I think it's the combination of how it feels on my skin and the ingredients list or mainly what it doesn't contain and it's just a beautiful product it's a Japanese sunscreen again it's by the brand Etvos skincare and it's their UV mineral serum which I think is a very good description of this because when you think of a serum you think of it as a skincare product that offers a lot of good skin kind of ingredients this is basically a skincare product with an SPF like it is super nourishing there's lots of beautiful things in it to help your skin so this one though is only an SPF 35 PA++ so it's still offers is a very good protection against UVA rays. It is only SPF 35 though which is a little bit lower however I find this one to be really really fine particularly in like winter, autumn, spring like the kind of more cooler months perhaps in the middle of summer I'll reach more for my SPF 50s to kind of get that real full-on protection but I still feel like SPF 35 is completely adequate. Now you get 30 grams of product which is quite standard for Asian sunscreens I've found. However, this one is really expensive. This retails for about $78 on your style, so it's like a very, very pricey product. That's the only thing that for me, as I say, I get a little bit like, oh, can I really say it's my favorite when it costs that much? Um, but it is beautiful and I've already got a backup. As I say, it is fragrance free. It's also silicone free, which is important for some people. It's packed with ceramides, amino acids, hyaluronic acid and squalene. So really beautiful nourishing ingredients for the skin and to protect the skin barrier. This is a completely mineral based sunscreen. So there's no chemical screens in this. It's titanium dioxide, non-nano as well. Because some people are concerned about nanoparticle mineral screens. If you're like a full-on drunk elephant advocate and you stand by the suspicious six kind of rules where you avoid silicones and obviously you avoid chemical screens and fragrance and all of that, this actually fits the drunk elephant philosophy. So if you're after sunscreen that does fit that but is a lot better than their actual sunscreens that they offer because supposedly they're not the best formulations, um, then I'd really look into this one. It's a white sort of creamy liquid in texture and it does create a little bit of a cast. If you've got very fair skin like me it won't bother you at all especially if you wear makeup on top like I do. It's what I'm wearing on my face today. However if you do have deeper skin I think you might struggle with the cast in this. Titanium dioxide is quite a casty sort of sunscreen screen <laughs> so that's probably the only downside is that it does have a little bit of a cast. Not so bad on fair skin like me but if you're deeper it might bother you. It creates the most beautiful dewy look on the skin. Again I love the way this looks. It sits beautifully under my makeup. It doesn't pill. It's also paraben and mineral oil free as well. The next one, or the next two I should say, are sort of basically different variants of the same product. Uh, they're by the brand Can Make, which again is a Japanese brand. But these though are a much less expensive Japanese brand, which so for those of you that are like on a bit more of a budget, these are a bit more budget friendly. You get 40 grams of product in the tube and they retail for approximately $20 on your style. Now they can make mermaid skin gel and I've got the clear version as well as the white version. So there are kind of two different varieties depending on what look you want. On your skin. They're both SPF 50 plus, PA++++, so they're like the ultra high protection against UVA and UVB. They are a combo of chemical and physical screens. They're packed with ceramides and hyaluronic acid, so again really good skin loving ingredients to protect your skin barrier. Obviously fragrance free because they're included in this lineup. And they do contain silicone, so if you are someone that tends to avoid silicones, I wouldn't recommend this one. It does have that kind of almost sort of primary feel to it. Now the clear version is the one that I've used most, it's the one I got first and this comes out like kind of a very pale yellow sort of gel cream 
texture and this one when it's applied and rubbed into the skin is completely invisible so this is a really good one to choose if you have slightly deeper skin or you want absolutely no cast whatsoever this one is completely invisible on the skin I really really loved this product I used it while I was over in England and it was perfect and nothing wrong with this the only thing probably being that it contains octanoxate which is that chemical screen that it's not reef safe um, so that's the only downside with a lot of chemical screens particularly those older chemical screens screens they can be damaging for the the reefs in our ecosystem that's probably the only negative with this because otherwise everything else about it is really really positive so you can make that choice for yourself as to whether you want to use products with octanoxate in them or not and then the white version which is O2 comes out like kind of a just an off-white color again it's got that kind of gel cream sort of texture and this one offers a bit more of a subtle brightening as they call it um, it's not really like a cast like the other ones but it does have that traditional kind of whitening brightening effect that a lot of sort of Asian beauty creams tend to have so this is a better one if you want to really like brighten your complexion you want something that will kind of lift it and give it that slight white cast I guess <laughs> um, I still really like this I'll still use it up but I think I do prefer the clear version the next one is another Japanese sunscreen this is by the brand Taiko and this is just called their sunscreen that's literally the name of it I love that and this is SPF 50 plus PA plus 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 so this is the highest kind of protection that you can get for UVA and UVB. You get 35 mils in this, so a tiny bit more than the standard. And this one is completely mineral based, so it's a titanium dioxide based formulation. It does contain silicones, and the texture of this one is like a white sort of runny liquid. When you shake the bottle, you can hear and feel the sort of liquidy product moving around in there. It's a very white runny liquid. It does leave a subtle white cast again, so if you've got deeper skin, I probably wouldn't recommend this one, but if you're very fair like me, I actually really enjoyed this one. It sat beautifully under my makeup. I love how high a protection it is. I like that it's reef safe. Like it's a really beautiful product. It's also nice and small packaging, so easy to carry in your makeup bag. The next one we're gonna talk about is the Hadalabo UV White Gel. This one's quite popular. I've had quite a few of you guys actually recommend it to me to try. Um, it's probably not my absolute favorite one out of the lot. This would be lower on the lower end of all the ones that I tried. It's SPF 50 plus, PA plus 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 plus. So that is high, very high protection. This is a Japanese brand, by the way. What I love about this is that you get 90 grams of product in this tub and it's only about $25 on your stuff. So price per gram for this is phenomenal. This is like kind of a white creamy lotion in a tub. It's not as thick as you'd expect for a jar kind of tub product. I do kind of wish it was in a squeezy tube because it's just a little bit more sanitary than a tub dipping your hand in. This is a mixture of mineral and chemical screens. So it's got titanium dioxide as well as oxygen, oxygen oxide, oxygen oxide. I'll never be able to say that. Of course, it's fragrance and dye free and mineral oil free. However, it does contain parabens, which for some people, you may not like that. Um, it's got silicones in it. it, does have hyaluronic acid, but it also has a tiny bit of alcohol in it. And as I sort of said earlier, alcohol is something I generally try and avoid in my skincare. Having a tiny bit in a sunscreen quite far down on the list, which this one is, is not the end of the world. It is the last thing that you're putting on your skin and your skincare routine. So you've got all these other hydrating ingredients underneath that's sort of not as bad as having it in say a serum or something but I still don't love that aspect of it and I did notice when I first tried it it did kind of like slightly sting my skin a wee bit when I was putting on like stings probably the wrong word I could just feel it doing something to my skin because it didn't hurt or anything but I just noticed an effect as opposed to the other ones which feel very inert and the other thing is that you can definitely smell the alcohol in it and you can also smell that kind of sunscreeny smell. It's not super strong, but it is there. I know a lot of you guys really love it. It does kind of dry down to a bit of a more matte texture. When you put it on, leave it for a couple of minutes. So I think for those that don't like that really greasy kind of um, glowy, dewy look that some of these other ones offer, which I personally love because I love a dewy base. If you want something that's a little bit more real, realistic skin sort of finish, you'd probably quite like this because it does sort of dry down. The next one is another Japanese one. This is by the brand OMI or OMI. Not 100% sure whether it's an acronym or a, a name. It's their Selena Vale Protect Face Milk. And I think it's such a good name for this product because the consistency of this is literally like milk. <laughs> this is SPF 50 plus, PA plus 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 plus. So it's very, very high protection. You get 40 mils of product in this. So a little bit more than standard. Oh, did I not put down a price for this? Hold up, let me look up a price. I collected all this information in a notebook when I was trying these over the last few weeks. I'd like write all my notes down. Solano Vale. Oh geez, it's so cheap. 
This one retails for around $10 Australian from Yestar. That's crazy. I didn't realize this was such a cheap brand. That's awesome. This one is a silicon based formula. It's a combination of screens. It's got zinc oxide, titanium dioxide, so a couple of physical screens as well as octanoxate and Uvenel A+. It's got hyaluronic acid for a bit of extra hydration. It does contain parabens. There was one thing about it. I was like, hmm. Um, it doesn't leave a cast on fair skin, so like it's my sort of complexion, I didn't notice a cast at all, but I did look up a review on someone that had deeper skin and they said it left a cast on them, so perhaps if you've got a deeper skin you'd find it a bit casty, but at least on me, I found it, in my experience, I found it to be invisible. It's definitely a runny, milky liquid, like this is one that just sounds like milk in a bottle. A little bit hard to work with in that way, it doesn't kind of apply as easily as a cream, but because it is quite thin and liquidy, it has not a lot of texture to it. Something I will say about it is that it does kind of leave a slightly a slightly greasy feel to the skin. It's that typical kind of like silicone primer slippy feel. But for that reason it actually does make a really nice kind of primer under makeup. You almost don't need to use another primer. You could just apply this, wait 10 minutes and then go in with your makeup. Of course it is fragrance free and it's also alcohol free which for such a thin liquid kind of sunscreen is quite rare. I've tried quite a few other ones in the past that are these thin consistencies but they're so alcoholic. I'll talk about one later on that I was like Whoa, knocked back because it was so alcoholic. It was one of the ones I didn't like. But yeah this one doesn't have alcohol in it so I really love that about it. It sat beautifully under my makeup. Up. I was very surprised by this and now hearing that it's only ten dollars that makes me like it even more I think it's very good value this is the Vintorte mineral silk matte base and this is a Japanese brand Vintorte yeah, this retails for about seventy four dollars Australian you do only get 30 grams of products it's SPF 30 PA plus 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 so even though it doesn't offer quite as high um, UVB sort of burning protection it does still have quite a good UVA spectrum as the name suggests mineral silk matte base it is a mineral screen using titanium dioxide it also contains squalanes which is really really nice and nourishing for the skin it's silicon paraben alcohol talc mineral oil and fragrance free so it's quite free of a lot of things that people don't want <laughs> it's like a beige gel cream sort of consistency but it doesn't leave any sort of cast or pigment or tint to the skin so don't be worried when you see the the product come out and think it looks a bit like a foundation it's they've just probably put a bit of tint in it like that to counteract the titanium dioxide which can look a bit casty therefore you're left with no cast when it goes on. So this one does have that very sort of natural matte finish. It looks very sort of skin-like. Better, I think, for oily skin. I think if you have dry skin, you might find this one pill a little bit under your makeup, or you certainly wouldn't really probably enjoy the finish just because it does definitely look matte. The next one is again one that you guys have heard me talk about before. I mentioned it in my like Korean skincare review video that I did a while back. It's by Etude House. So this is a Korean sunscreen we haven't had too many of those in this video but this is a korean one it's the etude house soon jung mild defense sun cream the soon jung line from etude house is amazing like most of their products in that line are really really great they're all fragrance free they don't contain very too many ingredients like they're just very simple ingredients that do the job well now this one you do get 50 mils of product so you get quite a decent amount and this one retails for only about $17, so it's very inexpensive. It's SPF 49, which is very specific, and it's PA++. This one doesn't offer quite as good sort of UVA protection. If you suffer from a lot of hyperpigmentation, um, then this one probably isn't quite as good. But it does have a very high protection against like burning. It's fragrance, mineral oil, and talc-free. Also doesn't have parabens. It's silicon-based, and it's got a mixture of zinc and titanium screens. So it's completely mineral-based, but it does have those two different types of mineral screens in it. The texture of this is like a thick kind of white cream and it does leave again a bit of a subtle white cast even on my complexion. It's not enough to bother me especially once I've got makeup on but if you have deeper complexion you probably wouldn't like this. I'd say if you're any more than like a MAC in WNC 30 you'd probably best to stay away from this one and then the last one in my top 10 is the Vintorte UV mineral UV cream this is again that Japanese brand Vintorte and this one is SPF 50 plus PA plus 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 do only get 30 grams and this one does come out at around $67 so not cheap but again this is one that I think has quite a sort of clean ingredient list so really good if you do sort of follow that drunk elephant philosophy as the name suggests it's completely mineral based so it uses a combination of zinc oxide and titanium dioxide it's got lots of different oils in it so it's quite nourishing for the skin particularly those with dry skins that are wanting a mineral cream which can sometimes be a little drying um, I think this one you'd really like because it's got jojoba seed oil macadamia seed oil baobab 
oil <laughs> like there's quite a few different sort of seed oils in it to help nourish the skin there's no artificial fragrance or dyes um, although the actual product does smell quite like those oils so it's just got that very natural oil scent it's a very very thick white cream and it does leave a bit of a white cast as well so again if you have deeper skin this one's probably not the best really if you have deeper skin you're probably better off using a chemical screen but I am not probably the person to be consulting about deep skin sunscreens because I have no experience in that. Apologies if this video was very unhelpful for you. There were five other ones that I kind of want to talk about. The first two are ones that I tried and really hoped that would be good for me but they just didn't kind of work as well so I just wanted to kind of do a review on them as well I guess. The first is the Orbis UV Cut Sunscreen Super and this is a Japanese brand I believe. This you get 50 grams, it's about $40, it doesn't have any added fragrance and it's SPF 50 plus, PA plus 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 plus. Um, the reason I didn't really like this, uh, it's an octanoxate screen only, so it's a chemical screen and it doesn't have any of those nice fancy newer more stable chemical screens in it um, and it really really smells like chemical screens, it has that very traditional chemical screen smell. Combined with its texture which is quite a thick white texture um, it leaves a very sort of greasy feel on the skin that's not really dewy finish, it's definitely that greasy kind of finish. And it reminds me so much of those old school sunscreens that our parents used to slather onto us at the beach as kids. So, and I also found it to be very average under makeup, like my makeup wouldn't sit as nicely on it as other ones. So I do just want to point out that I did try this, but I didn't really like this one. This next one though that I'm going to talk about, I actually think is a good product. I just don't think it's quite right for me and my skin type. As I said earlier, I have a normal to oily skin and I think this is one that would work better for dry skin types. This is a Japanese brand. It's the Roto Mentholatum Kuji sunscreen. This is made by the same people as like Hadalabo, like they're owned by the same company. This you get 30 grams, it retails for about $68, so it's quite expensive again. But it is SPF 50 plus, PA plus 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 plus. How many times have I said that? Drink again. Uh, but this one, it's silicone based, it's a combo screen, it has zinc oxide and oxanoxate. This contains a rice ferment in it which is meant to be like really good for drier skin. I'm a wee bit scared of fermented ingredients in skincare now. Ever since I got told that it could aggravate um, fungal acne and I do worry that the acne I was suffering with earlier in the year was triggered by that. But I was a wee bit scared to try this. I did use it a couple of times. Um, I didn't notice any huge adverse effect but I've been using it mainly actually on my décolletage just to kind of protect this and that way I'm still kind of using the product up but I'm not putting it directly on my face which can break out. It's a very sort of rich nourishing cream you can feel when you're putting on your skin that it would just suit a dry skin type really really well even though it's quite a thick sort of white rich cream it doesn't really leave much of a cast which is nice uh, mainly probably because it doesn't contain titanium dioxide um, and of course it is fragrance free the only other thing is that it does contain parabens and right at the very bottom of the ingredients list there is alcohol listed so it does contain a tiny bit of alcohol but you really cannot smell it in the product at all I think it's going to be in such a tiny quantity in here that it really won't even make a difference and there were just a couple that I wanted to just briefly touch on at the end here they're sunscreens that I've seen really advertised quite heavily across social media they seem to be very popular sunscreens um, and so I did pick them up to try them but I personally didn't get along with them for reasons. Um, the first one is the Dare Clears Soft Airy UV Essence. This SPF 50 plus, PA plus 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 plus. Dare Clears is a Korean brand. Gel texture, vegan friendly. So you get 80 mils of product and it does retail for around $30. So it's not too expensive. But the reason I didn't love this one is it does contain a couple of essential oils which give it a bit of a fragrance. So that for me is not something that I love to use. I'm probably gonna use this one up actually as like a body sunscreen because it is a very high protection. I just would prefer to avoid fragrance on my actual face. I can't figure out from the ingredients list what screens it is but it is all chemical because there's no titanium or zinc oxide in it. The other one I looked at was the Somme by Me True Sicker Mineral 100 Calming Sunscreen and the reason I picked this one up is again saw heaps of people talking about it and when I looked at the ingredients list I could swear it only had tea tree oil in it but I think it's got something else in it as well because this is so highly fragranced and this was quite irritating on my skin actually particularly around my eye area like not that you really should put sunscreen on your eye but you know I bring it up around here and I could find it the scent was kind of overwhelming there's like a citrusy kind of oil in there and there's also tea tree oil which I, I don't actually mind tea tree oil in products um, because there are some really good benefits to tea tree oil it's probably the only essential oil I'm actually kind of like don't mind using in my skincare but oh 
it's strong but again this is not a very expensive brand you do get 50 mils of product so if you're not bothered by essential oils or fragrance then you might quite like this one it doesn't really leave much of a cast um, and it is a mineral screen. Then the last one, this is by Shiseido and it's one of the like watery essences or something um, but this one I'm not even going to recommend it. I don't even need to look up the details because this is just like, it's just full of alcohol like when you, it's one of those real liquidy kind of essence sort of sunscreens and when you sniff it, it smells like you're sniffing a bottle of vodka. It is just so packed with alcohol. It's so drying and just this is the kind of alcoholic sunscreen that I hate so don't buy that one <laughs> but anyway i hope that you found this video informative i know it was a lot of information just being thrown at you but i hope that you found it informative and i hope that it will help you with your sunscreen buying needs if you have any questions put them in the comments below i'd love to answer them for you and if you have any other suggestions for videos that you'd like to see pop them down there as well i can't always do all of the ideas that are thrown my way but i do quite like to get a bit of you know market research on what you guys want but once again thank you so much for watching and i'll talk to you guys in my next video bye